Well, for more on the story, we're joined by former Constitutional Court Justice, uh, that's Zach Yacoub. Good evening, uh, Justice Yacoub. Always a pleasure being in, in conversation with you. Such you an important... Call me Zach, please. It's a lot better. Uh, n no problem. Uh, such an important case that uh, was before the Equality Court. And I wonder, just your own observations as you were watching it, and today, of course, having that final judgment with this case being dismissed. Yeah, I must start by saying it's a very difficult case. It's not easy to decide these questions. I can tell you my own view in a moment. But on the one hand, there's freedom of expression, and you have to be able to say what you want to say, even if it upsets some people. Because you can't keep quiet about things that make people feel uncomfortable. What our Constitution does say is that you cannot incite violence. And the whole trouble is, when this kill the boar thing is played, do people, do the majority of people, just understand it as something which happened in the past, and people are just referring to it to remind ourselves of the struggle and how bad things were in the past, or are we trying to incite violence now? And I don't myself, and this is my own opinion, I'm saying at the moment my own opinion is that I agree with the Equality Court. I don't, Cathy, want to influence any other court later because they'll go on appeal, of course. So my humble view is that nobody who hears that and who sees it will want to go and kill anybody, will want to go and kill Afrikaners or anything of the court. Nobody will start hating Africans. We are all mature people. Even African people are mature people. And I think, Kathy, when you and I hear this, they say, well, this was a slogan in the past when there was apartheid and things were bad, and we are just remembering those things. Nobody runs out now to kill the poor. Of course, farmers are killed, and that's what Afri Forum will say. But there is no indication, Kathy, that the killing of farmers has increased or anything like that. I think everybody just looks at it in a very relaxed sort of way mm -hmm. and says, this was a pre-1994 symbol, which we are playing again and again to remember our struggles. It's so that's where I am. But I must say, Kathy, it's, a, it's not an easy case. Another court might decide it differently. But I, I, I heard it again and again. I had it described to me again and again. And honestly, I can't see people, and I know I can't see Kathy, don't worry about that, but I can't in my head see people running around saying, now we must kill the poor. Obviously, it's a thing of the past, but Kathy, you're, it's over to you. It's precisely that uh, flexible approach that uh, you are talking about tonight that Judge Mulakehi also took when presiding over this matter. And it, it speaks to a, a debate and a conversation that came before court, which is really around the preservation in, in many ways of our country's history. I suppose the more important question is how do we preserve that history in contemporary South Africa without being seen to be igniting or even stoking new fault lines around race or even racism? So first, I don't think we are seen to be igniting. They are not seen to be igniting anything. I have not seen any evidence of anything being ignited. By the way, I must say I'm biased because before 1994, I was the loudest chanter of the slogan you could find. Mm. So having made that confession, I don't see the possibilities of new race violence. I, 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 my own sense is that it's bringing a case like this that stokes up the violence, that makes Afrikaners feel unhappy and miserable. And I've spoken to many Afrikaners, Kathy, and they say they don't care about this thing. They can carry on with these slogans. We are, we are not stupid, the Afrikaners say. We understand that it comes in the past. But I think that, honestly, that bringing cases like this stokes things up. Mm. 
if Africa Forum had just left it, the thing would have died a natural death a long time ago. So, so what then do you think are the important lessons to take out of this moment, again still being mindful of the fact that there could well still be uh, an appeal on the cards? I think we take out, out of this moment the idea that freedom of expression is vital in our country. It was the old apartheid people who used to stop us from saying what we want to say. And I think that un unless freedom of expression is likely to cause serious harm, it should be allowed. And as I said earlier, we all have to be mature about it and say, it doesn't matter if you feel uncomfortable. You, many people say lots of things to me that make me feel uncomfortable. Mm. And I, I live with it. I mean, many people say to me that they think that sometimes they think maybe apartheid was a good thing. Some white people say that to me still. They say that it was a good government. They say to me that may, they, in those days the apartheid government didn't steal and so on. And I, that makes me feel very uncomfortable because it makes me think that what they're saying is that only African people are stealing today. And of course we know that the white people under apartheid total are stole like hell. Only they were able to hide it better. So being uncomfortable is not the issue, Kathy. The issue is whether if you look at the statement and you see the thing happening, you can see in your head and in your heart violence coming up. And I wish I could ask you as the announcer whether you, when you look at it, it seems to you like violence is coming up. Jack, Zach, I'm going to have to leave it there. I'm going to get away, take liberties without answering the question. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Zach Yakub, he is a former constitutional court judge there.